Right, I'm at the Abbey at Dunfermline where I've just been told David I and Matilda are buried. He's got it written in a book and he's going to show it to me. I'm just going down these tower steps and um, I just thought I'd do a little bit of video now because it might fill up with people and they can't do much videoing properly. J.M. So here we are in the Abbey. You have to pay to get in this bit, but I got a concession. I got half price because I belong to English Heritage. So this is the actual Abbey. And this is where David and Matilda might have even lived for a while, who knows? Look around this bit first. The palace, maybe. Yeah. It's got King Bruce written on the part of the tower. keep my finger off the button I sometimes turn off my videos. Dunfermline Abbey, the kitchen. The kitchen was served which served the rectory of an abbey which usually placed a safe distance from it to reduce the risk of fire. At Dunfermline it had to be across the road leading into the inner precinct. That's the kitchen. This is the kitchen everyone. Looks like a bit of burning going on there, doesn't it? Look. Maybe the chimney was there. So we're going back a long way. Oh, that's high up as well. Very high up we are. Obviously it wouldn't tarmac in those days. So I'm just videoing a bit because it's so difficult to video when there's people around. Dunfermline Abbey and Palace. Official souvenir guide. It was established in the 11th century by St. Margaret and Malcolm III. David I and Robert Bruce created much of what we see today, and both are buried here beside Margaret and Malcolm. The palace served as a guest house for the royal family throughout the Middle Ages, and after the Reformation became a palace for Queen Anne, wife of James VI. In 1600, she gave birth here to Charles I, the last monarch born on Scottish soil. Well, that's interested then. So David the first was quite important. Oh my God, this is creepy. The royal guest house. James the first, a number of heirs to the throne, were born in the abbey, presumably within the existing guest house on its predecessor. James the first was born the twenty fifth of July, thirteen ninety four. So this is the guest house. I'll do some photos in a minute. An abbey was expected to provide hospitality to all who might call on it. 
and the grandest visitors would be entertained by the abbot himself. So the palace and the abbey. in those walls. <coughs> so David the First and Malcolm the Third were responsible for much of the building of the Abbey. Isn't that amazing? <coughs> the guest house as a royal palace. See this is where Ma Matilda would have become. At the Abbey of Holyrood in Edinburgh, the Royal Palace, which formed part of the Abbey there, eventually became more important than the Abbey itself, and all that is left of the monastery is part of the church. The same process was started at Dunfermline. In both cases, the Abbey also has an import, important royal resident, and after the Reformation, the residents began to spread to include the monastic buildings. But whereas Holyrood was largely rebuilt after the restoration of the monarchy in 1660, and still in use as a palace, Dunfermline had been abandoned for royal occupation by that time. Charles I, the palace was the birthplace of James VI, second son, the future Charles I, on 19th of November 1600. Three years after his birth, the royal family moved to England when James succeeded to the English crown. <coughs> and look at that. And if you look at the top of the tower there, sun's out but there's Bruce, King Bruce is written on that tower. King Bruce is written on that tower. I'll be going in that in a minute. I'm finding this is brilliant. This is the history. It's all very brilliant this, isn't it? Right, before I do any more, I'm just going to end this bit of it.